The Right Stuff is a 1979 book by Tom Wolfe that celebrates the remarkable heroics of the Flyboys that beat the odds and slipped the bonds of the earth for the first time. The focus of the book is on the guts and determination it took to risk it all in the pursuit of a worthy cause. Judy Desjardins is made of that same stuff. Fearlessness, drive, determination, the ability to see opportunity where others don't, and the willingness to go for it, knowing full well that she doesn't have all the answers. Judy says, sometimes you just got to put yourself out there. You got to start and not stop. For the past 18 years, Judy and her business partner and husband, Boomer, have been beating the odds in BC's oil patch. They fought their way through the Great Recession of 2008. They survived the decimation of the energy sector, and now they're poised to benefit from a resurging economy in northeastern BC. Judy says the key to success is a willingness to do what others won't for more hours every day than you can ever imagine. And at times, she says, you have to say to your family, I love you, but I just got to do this. She adds, then you need to also add in a healthy dollop of faith because, as she puts it, faith is what got her and Boomer through some really tough times. It was needed as support for the nerves of steel that they required. I invited Judy Desjardins of Top Notch Contractors to join me for a conversation that matters about a mindset that will not accept defeat. You're down here on the West Coast right now on business. Uh, tell me, what is your business? Where are you located? And what industry sector are you focused on? I'm Top Notch Oil Field contracting. I'm the owner of Top Notch Oil Field. I'm up in the Northeast British Columbia area, particularly Fort St. John, uh, where we service our where we supply our services in the Northeast is uh, on one of the Montney play areas. It's one of the biggest and um, we're into civil earthworks, trucking, and uh, we started out with laborers, but right now we're mostly uh, focused around the civil earthworks and trucking. So it's primarily for uh, the natural development gas. of natural gas, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And how important is that natural gas sector to the economy in northeastern BC? That's our bread and butter. It's the, most of the businesses and the people that live in the north make their living off the natural resources within our territory, within the, the Treaty of Territory within Northeast BC. We have uh, oil and gas, we have forestry, we have um, coal, and a lot of families uh, make their living that way. So natural resource development of all sorts, not just LNG, not is just fundamental LNG. to the economy of the area. Yes. Very fundamental, yeah. So your company, Top Notch, mm -hmm. what exactly are the services that you provide into the resource sector? Uh, civil earthworks and trucking. And how many people do you employ? Right now we're up to 50. Uh, it could increase here in a little while. We usually go right up to 100, 150. So that's 50 on staff. Do you yes. also have uh, independents that you bring in when you need them? Yes. I uh, often reach out to the subcontractors, the uh, First Nation contractors. If I need extras, they come, they come in and assist me if I need more equipment or I need more uh, trucking or I need more uh, manpower. And your workforce, tell me about your workforce. Uh, where do you, like, is there an, uh, enough people in the area to meet your needs or are you finding people are coming in from out of the area also to, to meet the employment needs that you have? Um, I reach uh, anywhere from local to right down to the interior here. Uh, everybody within the Treaty 8, I go across the border to Alberta. And if I need people, um, that's where I'd reach, but I'd reach around... Uh, the local communities. So how many vehicles do you have? What's, what's like, I'm curious to know, like, you know, what your company from an equipment perspective a, looks like. We have about uh, 105 pieces of equipment and we have uh, about two full-time service guys that follow our crews around if something needs to be done. They're there. We're not waiting on for us to haul our machines out and get them serviced. They're you're just in continual maintenance. Yeah. Wow. 105 pieces of equipment. Yeah. 
My oh my. When you cast your mind back to what, it was 2002 when you started the company? 2004. 2004. Yeah. <laughs> what was your start? <laughs> Our start was, uh, it was manpower. We, we started out with seismic crews. And seismic crews are seismic guys, chainsaw operators uh, that are certified in falling trees to, to, to cut the line for the drills to come in for activity to... Um, for the, the oil companies to come in and drill and see if there's oil there, if it's a good area, the, then they'll clear the plat pad and drill with the service rig. And, you know, that's what we did. We supplied the guys to go out and do this. And that when we started out, we started out with four. Uh, then a winter later, we ended up with 150 men from Fort St. John to Fort Nelson. In one year? Yep. Holy and, that, and, and because it's seasonal, and the the seismic companies they only do it in certain times of the year. Mm -hmm. Then we'd have to have crews here. They're doing all these jobs at the same time from Fort St. John all the way to Fort Nelson. So sometimes it's that many guys needed, you know, just to do a job. How did you navigate your way through that? Because I can only imagine the chaos. <laughs> well, it would have been with that rapid growth and so many people. Well, it was, <laughs> yeah, well, Boomer had some good guys that worked with him. Him and I worked hand in hand together and uh, making things work with the, the guys needing supplies out into the field. I would bring that and, you know, um, for anything that need, they needed from uh, parts to whatever, I'd deliver it and he'd be out there with the guys helping them and then he'd had foremans that would look after each cruise and so it was quite a bit of a task to build a crew that was good but once we got it all down pat then it was just like things moved smoothly and the biggest thing with that was supporting your people because without the people you can't build anything and you won't be able to move forward. So when you look back on that, the navigating your way through the early days of any business, really challenging. What's the most important thing? Let's say somebody else says, okay, Judy, I want to follow in your footsteps. What do, what would you tell them that they need to know to be able to start to build out a business that is constantly shifting and changing, has these outdoor components, you've got a workforce that you're having to you know, move people in and out. You know, what are the essential uh, learning elements of building a business like that? You got to be willing to take risks. Huh. And you got to be willing to work through those risks and look at things from all angles. And really, if I didn't, uh, if we had doubt, I don't think we would be here. Huh. But with doubt, um, you just can't move. But with faith, we had faith, and we had a goal, we had a dream, and we kept after it. And most importantly is respect your people, look after your people. Your people are the ones who's going to help you advance forward. What, what did your days look like? How long were they? Because as a small business person myself, <laughs> I know you go, you work <laughs> endlessly. You work endlessly. <laughs> so I remember, like, back in the day, like working with that many guys and constantly on the highway. I, when I say I had two little girls, I, I, I did a uh, article for Women in Business way back in 2013, and they asked me the same question. And when I say in that article that my children, two of my little girls, two of them are graduating now, but when, they, when I say they grew up in the back seat and they know every, in, in this, every road, that leads to a lease or a, uh, a camp in the Northeast, they know them. <laughs> Just they know they, them. <laughs> they know. They grew up in the backseat. They watched uh, as we, we took parts and equipment and whatever that needed to be there, I would take it and they would have to come. So, so it was like long mm, days, yeah. long days. Um, sometimes you put your business first, put your before your family if you're trying to make a go to stuff but the kids were very understanding because they often came with us to work and then uh, just in 2014, 13 or 14 we purchased a piece of land up in the northeast up at mile in, in the Pink Mountain area 
and we built a little campground there and we built, built our own little home away from home so when the kids came that's where we'd go and spend and I'd be able to work from there as well. Wow. Yeah. So when you look back on uh, like the beginning of your business, what was it that made you say, yeah, okay, I'm going to take the risk to be in business? Did you have experience with that, somebody else in your family? Or was this, you know, you're, you're going, I don't know, I think there's an opportunity and I'm going for it. You know, uh, my husband's really go-getter and his parents, mom and dad, actually had a business before and he grew up in the oil field more uh, longer than I did. <laughs> like, um, so he watched how they grew their business he knew about the risks. He's seen how hard mom and dad worked. And here we are, you know, he's leading just as his dad led his family and he he's leading our family. Can you imagine any other way to have, uh, I guess, enjoyed the kind of career success uh, and hopefully the financial success that comes with, you know, sticking with it? Uh, could you have ever imagined uh, this kind of outcome? Not without hard work <laughs> and long, a lot of years in school. You know, I'll tell you a little story. Like way before uh, we got into business, 2003, we were up in Red Earth Country, Red Earth, Northern Alberta, and it's an oil field town, small, small oil field town, but busy. And my dream, we were just kids, and my dream was to go and be a hairdresser. So I was going to pursue that, build my shop, have my own business as a hairdresser. 2004 hit. Somebody called up my husband and said, come and do this job. It's going to take you two weeks. Then we ended up there for two months. And then <laughs> <laughs> that was 2004. Then we've been there 17 years now. Right now I have 105 pieces of equipment, roughly 50 employees, good solid uh, uh, revenue sheet and... Uh, it's amazing, isn't it? It is really amazing. And uh, when I think back at it now, it's like to do it all over again, I don't think I'd have the energy, but I, would, I wouldn't I would change a thing because we learned a lot of things along the way. We met a lot of wonderful people. Right. We've built a rep re reputation, not just from ourselves, but by other people that we engaged our business with and that come to work for us and you know it's very respectful to um, have a reputation just being built by people that you meet people you work with what's the most important thing that you've learned about yourself on this journey of entrepreneurship <laughs> patience <laughs> patience I'll tell you why patience because yeah. when we were first started out in business we had no clue I had no clue but my husband did he says you know we have to have money in the bank we have to make sure that we are managing this well because sometimes oil companies don't pay 30 60 90 some of them pay 120 so in those times was very challenging so here we are you know trying to make this go of it we had no investors, none. We had uh, the help of, you know, we purchased one equipment and then we'd, we made or built a relationship with the bank. The bank seen our invoices and they would often cover, help us cover our payroll or help us cover our, you know, our expenses, whatever, until if we were in a tight situation. But at the same time, patience because you know waiting and waiting and waiting it's like okay now things are getting hairy here <laughs> but you know when I when we built the relationship with our bank and they seen our growth year after year after year it was just a phone call if I needed to it wasn't too often but right they were they were always there learning that whole cash flow cycle yeah. It was a real eye-opener for me uh, when I started my business. Well, well, just a second, I just did the work here. You're not going to pay me till when? Mm -hmm. And i got to pay these people now? Yeah, exactly. Like, and then, as you say, you have to have patience. 
And but you also have to have faith. Yes. You have to have faith that yes, they'll pay. Mm -hmm. That there'll be another job that you can afford to meet uh, to meet your obligations. It is a trying, trying experience. So yeah. you have to have patience, and I think you also have nerves of steel, don't you? Yeah. And did you know <laughs> that you had that kind of like resolve? I didn't actually. I didn't know <laughs> until you know I was. There was there was this time I just there was nothing I could do except to wait. So here I am sitting there. It was a Friday afternoon. I'm sitting there. The guys are calling and we had built enough relationship at this time with a few of the big companies in Fort St. John. And Boomer said, "Give me one second. A phone uh, I'm going to I'm going to phone you right back." Within 2 minutes, one of our friends said, "Come on over. Help you out." Yeah. And then, you know, just building a relationship. And it was just times like that. And the faith is where it really, really, it carried me through those hairy and have to have nerves of steel times, you know. You've mentioned a couple of times now uh, relationships. Uh, relationships are vitally important yes, in business, is. aren't they? It is. Because mm -hmm. you never know if you're going to need uh, a friend's advice. You never know if you're gonna need your bank's advice. You never know if you're gonna need mom and dad's advice, your neighbor's advice. But build in relationship because some, you know, like our relationships we built within the businesses around Fort St. John, our um, people we work with is, they have different services than us. They've done different things than we did and often reaching out to say, hey, how do you guys do this? Would you like to work together? And that's how we grew as a family in Fort St. John with the different businesses. So that if I didn't have a faller bunger, which is a piece of forestry equipment, I can phone my friend down the road and say, let's work together on this job and then we can keep moving. And that is very vital. Plus it helps keep the money in the community. You're helping families, one another, it's an energetic city. So often keeping the resources in the city so that the local businesses can thrive too. So when you're putting this kind of investment into your company mm -hmm. and your own resources, but at times you see a threat to the very sector that you're functioning in, does that send, you know, chills up your spine? Mm -hmm. It does because we had a lot we have a lot of time and money invested in this. A lot of time and mo money invested, not only into ourselves as a business, but we, we invest into the communities that surround us and even Fort St. John. Like my community is Blueberry River First Nations and I support a lot of children that want to go and do recreational works, um, recre recreational activities such as play soccer, play hockey, uh, anything they want to do that will get them out there and, you know, doing what they love. And I also support uh, education for my community, some students that are, are graduating. They, we Top Notch gives them a bursary. And, wow. Yeah, and elders, um, we do uh, transport them from uh, community events in the summertime. So we have a lot of cultural events that happen in the summer. Last summer it didn't, but the summer before, and a lot of community rodeos. So Top Notch provided a transportation to get the elders from Blueberry to go to a culture camp in the halfway reserve or to go to a rodeo in Doig River and just to get them out and enjoying uh, all the other elders that they, you know, were able to visit in the younger days. And you're able to do that because you have a successful it business. Is. I'm mm -hmm. able to do that because of the sector that I work in and because... Um, if I didn't have that, <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to do that, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, you have to have money to be able to contribute yeah. and give back, don't you? Exactly. And that then goes to everybody's quality of life. <laughs> yes, it goes back into the quality of life, uh, even for our local uh, retail shops in Fort St. John. When we have all of our resources working, uh, people can come shopping, people don't have to leave town. This is where they shop and they thrive too. They thrive when when our resources are all going. Okay, so for 
top notch, I mean, it's a great name because you're saying, well, you're hiring the best, but what is your competitive advantage? In the, in our sector, like a, a lot of things uh, comes when, when all companies are choosing companies like ourselves, it's based on safety ratings. It's based on, um, it's based on uh, how good of a view you have from other companies and you know, with our comp one of the companies we work with, it's been over 17 years that we've worked with them. And um, they came out and said that we, we scored pretty good with our safety rating. So that's how we were able to grow with them. So every year they'd give us something new to, to, to work with. And then we'd be able to supply more equipment and more equipment. And pretty soon we proved ourselves. Right. And then we became uh, one of the... Uh, competent uh, companies up in the Northeast. Judy, I was hoping that you were going to say, it's all there in our <clears throat> name. Top notch means that we're <laughs> top notch. Oh, yes, we're top notch. <laughs> That's all there is to it. <laughs> okay, in my company, I go, you know, my name, uh, name of my company is Oh Boy Productions, and I want people to go, Oh boy, that was a great video. And Oh boy, was it ever a pleasure working with you. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I think that in, in the name, you're also, you're saying, well, that's the standard that we're committed to, and yeah. and, and I think that this is is fundamental in in the running of, it, of especially of independent businesses. Yeah, well, safety. Well, actually, uh, one of the reviews right. we had was that we rated top. We wanted that we were one of the top rated companies for safety. I know that in the, in the heavy construction uh, sector, that safety is. Uh, number one in importance. You yeah. want people to go home in the same condition mm -hmm. that they were in when they came to work in the morning. You don't want incidents. And when you wind up having that kind of culture, it's a culture that is committed to, well, top-notch work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So with safety, like safety is a very, it's, it's, our, it's our top priority especially in the industry we work in. There's a lot of risks when you're traveling to and from work. And we like our people the way we hired them, you know, healthy and thriving. And um, the oil companies are the same way. Mm -hmm. they, they expect high standard of safety. They look at all your programs before you, they send you out to work. You often do an audit. So that determines whether they're going to hire you or not. Right. Exciting business. Exciting. Very exciting. Exciting times right now, especially up in the Fort St. John. Yeah. With so the, what do the next couple of, yeah, couple of years look like for you? Um, it's looking busy. Yeah. It's looking busy up there. And especially now with the OSB starting, the, the Peace, Peace River, Louisiana Pacific OSB plant that's right. coming. That's a big plant. Yeah. Huh? It's yeah. starting. It was on the news the other day that it's going to be firing back up and they're already hiring people. So we're going to have uh, one busy town. Well, isn't that one great? One busy area. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your success. Wishing Thank you, you continued much. success. And uh, hopefully we can have another conversation in a couple of years when uh, <laughs> you're like multinational or whatever i don't know <laughs> I'm, I'm pushing for that steve oh <laughs> <Are> yeah <you? laughs> one day